Hello biology students, welcome to this tutorial on how to do a chi-square test in Microsoft Excel. A chi-square test is a little bit difficult to do in Microsoft Excel. It's not just one thing that you push or one formula that you run. Instead you need to calculate the observed and expected frequencies yourself and then from there there's a simple formula that does the calculations for you for a chi-square. But there's a little bit of intermediary work you need to do before then. A chi-square test is useful when you're looking at two variables that are both categorical. So in our case what we're going to be looking at is these two variables, sex and number of black spots on the four-wing. For this species of butterfly, Pieris Rippe, it's the cabbage white butterfly. It's the most common white butterfly you find around Ottawa in the summer. And when you look at them next summer, you'll see that some of them have two black dots on the wing, and some of them have one black dot on their wing. We're going to see whether the number of black dots is associated with the sex of the butterfly. Now, you might be thinking that this variable, black spots on the forewing, should be considered continuous rather than categorical. But it is actually categorical because even though it is numbers, there's only two options of numbers and nothing in between and nothing outside their range. And because it's a binary variable, just two options, it's considered categorical. Let's get started on the chi-square test. This test is going to determine whether the frequency uh, of single or double black spots differs between males and females. In your data sheets for your fox skull data, I have put a tab such as this one that you can use to calculate the chi-square. Basically I've done a bit of the monkey work for you so you can just put your data in and uh, it's going to be a little bit easier, a little bit less confusing. So the main thing that you need to enter are these four boxes highlighted in yellow. Your observed frequencies for how many females have one spot, how many females have two spots, how many males have one, how many males have two. So let's count that out from our data sheet number of females, I've already sorted it by female. If you don't know how to sort, there's a tutorial you can view on that. How many females have two and one spots on their wing? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight females have two spots and one female has one spot. There we go. And as you can see, my, t my total columns, which are very simple, like here's the formula I use for them, it's just the sum of these two cells beside them. Oh, and I'm screwing up the formula right there. There we go. So my total columns and rows automatically populate as I enter data. Let's do the same thing for males. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven males have a single spot and one has two. There we go. So the total columns and total rows are all populated. I've entered our observed data. Down here, the expected values have automatically populated thanks to some formulae. So all these formulae are, are what's listed in the appendix of your lab manual for calculations. To calculate the expected frequency of females with one spot, I've just taken the total of this row, the, the total female row, and the total one spot column, and I've divided their product by the grand total. You can see how each of these four cells were calculated. It appears up here in the formula bar. So now we have the ingredients we need for our chi-square test. We have our expected values, 
I'm sorry, we have our observed values in yellow, our expected values in green. Now we just need to do the test itself, which is very easy in Excel. It's a formula. So you start a formula. Let's click here. Chi square. And here we go. Here's several formula that have something to do with chi squares. Chi distribution, chi dist returns the one tail probability of a chi square distribution. Chi inverse, we don't need that. Chi test, that's what we want. Returns the test for independence. The value in the chi square distribution for the statistic and appropriate degrees of freedom. Great. So where's the actual range? Meaning your observed data. There it is. Where's your expected data? Right there. And here's the ex explanations if you're confused whoops. If you're confused of what's the actual and what's the expected, it explains expected is the range of data that contains blah 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 blah. Okay. Hit OK. And there we go. That's my answer. Point zero zero two. This is not your chi square value, and it's not the critical chi square value either. What Excel has done here, it's gone through and skipped all the intermediary steps. Well, it's done the intermediary steps within its fancy computer brains, and all it's done is spit out the grand number that you're interested in. That is the p-value. That's what you're seeing right there. 0 0.002 is the p-value associated with this chi-square test. This p-value, as you can see, is less than 0.05. What that means is that behind the scenes, the chi-square value that was obtained during this test was greater than the critical chi-square value for our degrees of freedom. The take-home message that you need to care about is because this p-value is less than 0.05, that means you reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that there is no difference in the frequency of spots between males and females. You reject that null hypothesis in favor of what you can clearly see males tend to have one spot, females tend to have two spots. And indeed that's the case. Next summer you can take a look. Those white cabbage whites that you see with two spots tend to be female. That's how you do a chi-square test. Thank you for listening for, uh, through all these tutorials. I hope you've enjoyed them, or at least found them useful.